Hey, thanks for joining us. I'm Lou Brutus, and it is a pleasure to welcome Michael Poulsen from Volbeat. Michael, always good to see you. How are you? You too. Thank you. I'm okay. As of this, we are in Philadelphia right now, and you have a little bit of the World Wire Tour under your belt. So far, so good? Uh, totally. Yeah, we, you know, we only have one show uh, so far, but that's been pretty good. We had um, two shows with uh, Event 7 for So, yeah, we just get started, but everything's fine. Do you recall what your very first stadium gig was? First stadium gig? Honestly, no, I don't remember anymore. Do you remember any of your, like... Y do you remember at all your very first huge gig that was outside the realm of what you had had before? Yeah, it, it was probably a Danish festival or something. Right. Yeah. Tell me about some memorable gigs that you've had uh, on the rather titanic stick scale, the very large stuff. Uh, there's been lots of them. Uh, we've been uh, touring all around the world. And, you know, w one that always sticks out was um, Madison Square Garden with Metallica, um, not only because it was um, with Metallica, but because of the history of Madison Square Garden, and I'm, uh, I'm a huge boxing fan. So, you know, knowing that all my heroes has been fighting there, and um, also great entertainers like Elvis and Johnny Cash, um, that was an emotional trip for me, I remember. I'm Lou Brutus, Michael Paulson from Volbeat has joined me. You talk about great American entertainers, and I know you uh, have a very deep understanding of the rich history, the tapestry of the music from out of the United States. I would be very keen to hear your thoughts on the unfortunately now late Chuck Berry. Oh yeah, that's uh, a big loss, but you know he was he was an old guy, you know, so it's uh, it's kind of okay. You know, he, he had a good long life. Uh, I assume you know he definitely made history and uh, inspired a lot of people. Uh, I have lots of uh, Chuck Berry records, so um, I've seen him a couple of times. And uh, yeah, he will inspire um, Volbeat and many bands in the future. I have to say I'm jealous because I've seen thousands of bands through the years, but I never got around to seeing Chuck Berry. Do you remember where you saw him? Do you remember anything about the performance? <laughs> the first time I saw him was in Sweden, uh, and he was playing with um, Little Richard and Jelly Lewis. How big of a place? Uh, probably 50,000. You know, it was outside, big uh, outside festival. You know, you and I have had the conversation before. It sometimes seems folks from Europe, music fans in particular, have a deeper appreciation for some of the entertainers from here in the United States. How did you get hooked on? some of the, the older school stuff that, uh, that you work in Evolve Beats music, actually. Uh, that comes from my parents. Um, they were constantly listening to yeah, old music from the 50s, especially Elvis Presley and Johnny Cash and Fats Domino, Little Richard, J. Lee Lewis, uh, Chuck Berry, uh, the big performers, but also a lot of unknown performers that were standing in the shadows of those legendary performers. And um, I just, you know, it really got under my blood you know it was like uh, when I moved out of the house uh, I could definitely feel that I was missing something and uh, besides my parents <laughs> it was definitely mm -hmm. the music and uh, just start collecting all the 50s records um, and uh, when I start writing for Volbeat it was it was somehow I in my blood you know it, it I, I love the metal scene I love the sound of it but um, the songwriting from the 50s, I was very much into, so I just kind of mixed it, you know, um, kept the, um, the distorted sound from the metal scene, but more like the melodies from the 50s, and that came a big part of Moby. Who might be somebody from back in the day, 50s, 60s, who structurally had music that seems to uh, transcribe itself very well uh, over into modern, heavier music. Is there anybody who uses the same sort of structures uh, that you can look to for inspiration? I don't know. At the end of the day, I believe everybody who goes up there, you know, it, it is some kind of rock and roll. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't think too much about what, what other bands do. Um, we are inspired by a lot of different genres, and um, we don't think too much about what we're doing because everything needs to come from the heart. 
um, we're just blessed that a lot of people can relate to what we're doing. And uh, now we're on the tour with the, the biggest heavy rock band in history, uh, the Dear Metallica, and we truly appreciate that. They're those guys have been a big inspiration for Volbeat for, for many years and are still doing really strong records. You guys are currently out with Metallica on the World Wired Tour. You have uh, certainly been around one another uh, a number of times before. When you first started to come into contact with Metallica, what kind of things were you able to learn from them in terms of watching them and how they conduct their, their business or themselves on the road and how they get a great show across? You know, everything. Um, you know, it's, it's always great when you, you meet your idols that they're down to earth and that's exactly what Metallica is. They're very human. Uh, they're good to the bands. They're good people. Um, so we have the opportunity just to sit down and talk with them and see how the crew is working and, and everything. And now, you know, we actually signed a deal with the management Q Prime that also um, has been managing Metallica for many years, uh, which is a blessing too. You know, we truly appreciate that. But of course, you learn a lot when you meet your idols who are down to earth. Um, it's very, you know, very inspiring. When you get to a gig like this, we're in Philadelphia as of today, and there's going to be, you know, 60, 70,000 fans here. Do you ever get to take a moment and drink it in? Or are you just concentrating on the business at hand? Uh, um, you know, we just been home for a half year. We normally don't rest that much. Mm. We pretty much live our life on the road. But this time we, you know, we took some time home uh, a half year. And that's where you kind of consume everything and just lay back and, and think about what you've been doing for, for, <laughs> for all these years. And... Uh, it's amazing. It, it's been a great trip, and you know, there's still a lot of adventures out there for Volbeat. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, it's work. This is what we do. Uh, we love what we're doing, and uh, yeah, we'll just keep on making records and being inspired, and you know, um, just be very thankful to be able to do this with Metallica and and, uh, and, and other great bands. Volbeat is what you do, but if you did not do Volbeat for a living, what do you suppose you would be doing? Well, um, as I said to one of my friends a couple of days ago, uh, I said, uh, I'm not going to play in Volbeat forever, but it is the last thing I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. You know that's I had different kind of works before I could make a living playing in Volbeat. Like um, what? You know, I was a support teacher in, in, uh, in a school. I've also been working with uh, a handicapped kid, which was really good. Um, but the day I'm not going to do this anymore, I'm not sure if I want to have anything to do with music business again. <laughs> um, I kind of like the old days, how the music industry was like, you know, without the internet and all that stuff. Uh, it kind of lost its soul, if you ask me. So, you know, the day we decide that this is enough, I'm probably going to retire from everything that has anything to do with music and just figure out what I'm going to do then. Part of the problem with the music industry, I think you might be referring to with the Internet, is that there, there isn't too much mystery about bands anymore. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, you know, uh, you know I, I, I truly, I like that we, we, we were still around when there was no Internet. You know, I was still re releasing records with my first band, Dominus, at a certain time, and... That was a different way of promoting yourself, um, and there was a lot of more, you know, a lot more mystery about the bands. You know, you have to buy in the magazines or actually show up very early at the venues and maybe uh, <laughs> get a small clip of the guys walking into the to the venue. You know, it, w it was some big mystery around bands at that certain time, which I really like. And these days, you know, it's it's, it's just too much with all the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and all that crap. Um, it is a promotional tool, but uh, honestly, I, I'm not into it. It kind of takes away everything that has a soul, and as, as you said, it, it moves away the mystery around um, the bands. You know, we all need our heroes, uh, but I don't, I don't need my hero uh, to see my hero 24/7 on the net. You know, it gets bored by that, then he's not my hero anymore. <laughs> you know, it's, it's too much. You know. Who are some of the bands that you went to see when you were a kid? 
I've seen a lot of bands, you know, the list is long, so it could be anything. Were there, uh, we spoke about Chuck Berry, but what about metal shows of any kind or hard rock? Let, d d name a couple that come to mind. Uh, when it comes to metal, you know, it was mostly death metal bands I was, um, I was into. I'm still a lot, uh, very much into uh, death metal bands. Um, but mostly, you know, I'm, I'm listening to all kinds of music. As long as it moves you and has a soul, you know, uh, so it could be anything. You and I have both been going to concerts since we were young kids and probably shouldn't have been out in crowds that big, but um, do you keep any artifacts from the shows you've gone to? I've kept every ticket stub, every backstage pass, every little whatever I could from shows. Do you keep any of that stuff from bands you saw or from your own bands you've had through the years? Uh, not from our own tours anymore, but definitely from my own favorite bands. What would be, if there was one thing that you thought was a real treasure from a band, what would it be? Uh, the latest one would probably be uh, when we were playing with Black Sabbath in Sweden. And what's the artifact? Uh, what was it? It's a uh, it's the poster and um, and a, a laminate. Good. Yeah. And what happens for you guys after this tour with Metallica? Uh, we go home uh, for a very short while, and then we start uh, the European tour. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Then we take a break and start working on new songs. Michael, always a pleasure to see you. My pleasure. Thank you. Hard Drive Online is brought to you in part by Napa Auto Parts. Stop by your local Napa Auto Parts store and conquer the job and Napa know-how.